Hey Thirsty Souls! Welcome back to the Outpouring. So as you can see, we're outdoors and I have a special video for you today. So I'm going to be teaching you about some messianic dance steps. And if you've never seen messianic dance or Israeli dance, which is where it's derived from, the steps anyway, um, I'm going to show you a little bit of those steps today. And just so you know, in case you weren't aware, because a lot of you come from a Christian background where dance is not really something that's very common or popular. And the Bible in Psalm 150 says, praise his name in the dance. So dance is actually a biblical command from the Lord. It's really important. And when you look throughout all the Bible, you will notice that almost every reference to dance has to do with one thing and one thing only, and that is victory. So when we think about the victory that we have in Yeshua, the freedom that he has given to us from sin and from death, and you know all of the beauties and the benefits and the blessings that he has bestowed upon his people, we have much reason to rejoice. So that's what I'm going to be talking to you about today is learning some of those dance steps so that you can teach them in your own communities or when you go to a messianic conference you can be a little bit more aware. So there are many different kinds of steps and because the Israeli culture, kind of like America, is a melting pot because in 1948 when Israel became a nation again, all the different people from all the different countries that fled from Europe and Asia and Africa and America also uh, that came to colonize and to move back to the official state of Israel brought with them their native dance as well. So you have steps from all over the world. Um, you have Yemenites from Yemen and you have Mizaloos from Greece. You have um, coupes from France. And so I'm going to show you all those different dance steps and kind of how they all match together to create a beautiful uh, dance before the Lord. So the difference between messianic dance and Israeli dance is that Israeli folk dance is intended to be danced for folk, for people to come together um, in a community kind of a way. Whereas messianic dance is intended for worship to the Lord, which is the way dance was always intended to be. So unfortunately, dance was corrupted by the devil uh, thousands of years ago. Um, to be used in a seductive way to allure men and, and to be used in an evil kind of uh, sexual context. But that was never the intention of dance. The Lord says, let everything I have breath praise the Lord. And so we are going to use our arms, we're going to use our hands, we're going to use our feet. We're going to use everything that we have to praise and glorify the Father. So here's some of the best basic messianic dance steps that you can learn and practice uh, at home and you can use them interchangeably with whatever songs being played um, at your congregation. So the first step I'm going to explain to you is the Mayim. And the Mayim is Hebrew for water and as you will see it kind of has a fluid motion to it. We're going to do kind of a figure eight kind of step. So I'm going to show it to you and then you do it at home. Mayim has four steps and it is front, side, behind, side. Front, side, behind, side. So when you're doing the steps, say that to yourself to help you learn because some people are audible learners, some people are kinesthetic learners. And when you can do all the things together, it really helps you learn. So four steps and we're gonna do it. Starting with your right foot, crossing over to your left, front, side, behind, side, front, side, behind, side. So we did uh, a right mayam starting with our right foot going in the left direction and now we're going to do a mayam the other way. Front. So you can do a mayam to the right or to the left. So I'm showing it to you slow, and now we're going to do it a little bit faster. So those are two mimes back to back, to the right, to the left uh, directions. 
So again, you would do that to a 4-4 timing song, to a song that has eight beats, um, as it will fit nicely. So the next step I'm going to show you is going to be uh, the klezmer step, which is a step that if you've ever seen any uh, Jewish men, religious Jewish men in the, in the black outfits, often you will see them doing this type of movement, which is typically a side behind kind of step. And usually you see them linked arms doing this kind of motion. So this again has four steps to it, and a klezmer step is side behind side, heel, side, behind, side, heel. And just like with the mind, you can do it to the right and you can do it to the left, you can do it in either direction. So here's how it goes. Slow first. Side, behind, side, heel. Side, behind, side, heel. Now faster. And so, as I said before, sometimes you will see the men doing this dance linking arms, and typically when they do it in a uh, dance environment to, uh, as a special or whatever, you will notice that they do a very deep dip, so you kind of get that motion going. But when you're in congregational dance, and the faster the song is, the less dipping you're going to be able to do uh, as the song is moving along. But it's really nice when you can link arms with one another and kind of do that movement. It really is very beautiful. So when you do the heel part, you really want to make sure that you're looking in the direction of your foot. And the reason for that is so that your body has agreement uh, all together. If you're facing this way and your toe is this way, it's kind of awkward. You look out of agreement with yourself. So just make sure you're looking in the direction that your foot is going. So let me show you again, and you'll see what I mean. Side, 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 heel. And I'm looking in this direction. Side, behind, side, heel. And when you get everybody's head kind of turning in that direction, you'll notice how beautiful that looks when everyone is in a circle and doing things together. So the next step I'm going to show you is actually called the Yemenite. And believe it or not, this is the hardest step for people to learn oftentimes when we do it. I don't know why, but it just always seems to be the hardest step to learn. This is actually three steps. So you often do this to, a, to either a song that has a waltz time, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or you add a pause or a hop at the end to make it a four. So let me show you how it's gonna go. So it's three steps, as I said. Side, behind, cross. Side, behind, cross. And again, you can do it to the right or to the left. So do it slow. Side, behind, cross. 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 And you can do it fast. Side behind cross, side behind cross, side behind cross, side behind cross. So as I mentioned before, you can add a pause to it to make it four counts, or you can add a hop. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and it's basically exactly what it says. It's a Yemenite with a pause, or a Yemenite with a hop. So I'm going to do both. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or you can add the hop. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's basically a Yemenite step that seems to be the hardest one for people to learn. And the important part to remember is to shift your weight. If your weight is not on the foot that you are using, that you have just put down, then your balance is going to be a little bit off. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So when you go to the side, your weight needs to be here. When you go to the back, your weight needs to be there. When you cross in front, your weight needs to be here. In order for this foot to be free to go to the next step. So you need to practice that. Because if your weight is on the wrong foot, when it's time to move to the next side, you're not going to have the right timing. 
So just pay attention to that. Look at yourself in the mirror if you can uh, when you're doing it. So if you notice you're having a problem with the Yemenite, that's usually what it is. It's usually that your weight is not on the correct foot. So when you put your foot down, put the weight on it. So if it's easier for you, some people like to think about it as a side and then kind of a balanced motion because you're kind of going like forward. So let me show you what I mean by that. So hopefully that makes sense. And as I was saying before, um, Messianic dance doesn't have any hip moving uh, because this is not a seductive dance type. This is a dance for the Lord. So I'm going to show you a couple other steps. Now we're going to do a Cherkasia, which is also four steps. And this is going to be a very clear rocking motion. Forward, in place, back, in place. Forward, in place, back, in place. And as I said, you can do it to the right or to the left. Ready? Forward, in place, back, in place. Forward, in place, back, in place. And you can do it with the left foot as well. Forward, in place, back, in place. Forward, in place, back, in place. It's important that you are taking four steps, that your foot is leaving the ground for four counts. Do not do like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Your foot needs to actually leave the ground even though you're stepping in place. That's what's going to give you that rocking motion, which is often done with hands, and you'll see here. Forward, in place, back. Forward, in place, back, in place. So that's really important that you make sure that you're doing four actual steps. So the next step we're going to do is coupes, which is three steps to three counts. So it's going to be cross, in place, back together. Cross, in place, back together. And you can do that to many directions. You can do it to the left, to the right, whatever. You'll see what I mean. You can do it to pay forward. Forward and place together. You can do it with the other foot. Forward and place together. You can do it to the side. Forward and place together. Forward and place together. Now very often you will see it being done to the sides um, or to the front. Uh, rarely do you do it to the back, and when it's done to the back, it's generally called a back Yemenite because it's also three steps. Back and place together. Back and place together. So if you see people calling it a back Yemenite, that's okay too. Um, so that's the, the basic steps, and now I'm going to show you a combination called the Mizulu, which is um, a Greek step. And there's actually multiple ways to do it. You can do it in conjunction, in conjunction rather, with Mayim or uh, the traditional version. So I'm going to show you both ways and you'll see how you like it. So a Mizulu is basically going to be step, touch, behind, side, cross, pivot, step together, step, back together, back. That's the whole combination, and typically it's done with the right foot. You usually don't do it in the other direction, um, so you won't see it that often. So I'll show you to one direction, and you can practice that. So here's how it looks. I'm going to move slow. Step, touch, behind, side, cross, step together, step, back together, back. And now you're going to start again. So that's the whole combination, and that's typically how it's done. So when you see Greek people doing this dance together, this is usually the steps or something similar that they are doing. So let's do it again. Step, touch, behind, side, cross, pivot, step together, step, and back together, back. Step, touch, 
Notice that when I'm doing the step together step, back together back, I'm facing that direction on line of the circle. So while I was facing in the beginning toward the front, as soon as I pivoted, now I'm facing the line of the circle. So if you imagine an invisible line on a circle, we were facing in the middle, and now we're facing on the side. Okay? So that's the regular misery loop with the step together step, back together back. What we're gonna do is the beginning is going to be exactly the same, but the end, right after you pivot, we're gonna do a Mayim lift, Mayim lift. So I'll show you how that goes. Step, front, behind, side, front, behind, pivot, Mayim, lift, Mayim, lift. And then we're gonna start again. So watch me one more time. Step, touch, behind, side, cross, pivot. Everything's the same so far. Now we're gonna mine. Front, side, behind, lift. Front, side, behind, lift. And then you start all over again. So that's basically uh, the two different versions of the misery loop that you will find. So I like to do it with the Mayan because it kind of adds multiple different uh, Israeli messianic steps together. So now we're going to do turns. Now it might seem like, well this is not really a dance step uh, per se, but oftentimes I notice that people kind of get a little bit uh, off balance or lose their timing because they're not turning properly. So we're not going to be doing any kind of ballet where you know showing you how to spin many, many, many times without getting dizzy because normally in a congregational dance environment, you are not doing that. You're doing either turn right and left and that's about the end of it. So nobody is continuing to turn, 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 turn because everybody would get dizzy and bump into each other. So that's not traditionally what's done. So I'm going to show you how to do um, a three point turn to the right and to the left. And it's important that you're doing these turns in three counts and not in four counts. Now when you have a song that is four counts and it's done typically slower, usually it's the fourth count that is a pause um, or a slow turn. But it's important that you learn how to do the turns in three counts because when a song is fast, you need to be able to turn quickly. And there are messianic and Israeli dances that are like this so I'm going to show you the proper way to do a three-point turn together. So we'll do it to the right and we'll do it to the left. So we're going to take a step out, then we're going to pivot on both feet and then step together. So here's how it goes. Out, turn together, and then place. Up, turn together, and then place. Let's do it again. Out. Turn together, and then Turn together, and then So if you notice, when I'm doing it, I'm going out, and I'm not going out straight necessarily. I'm going a little bit on an angle, so it makes it easier for me to rotate my body and then step together. If you're stepping directly out, it makes it harder than if you know you're going in that direction and you just kind of Point your toe just a little bit to that direction, just so it makes it easier for your hip to turn out when you're turning together. This is another point that is really essential. When you're doing messianic dance in any kind of dance, typically, with the exception of hip hop, typically you do not do it flat footed, where your whole foot is on the ground. You really want to releve a little bit, have a little bit of air between the heels of your feet and the ground. You do not need to do ballet and stick your feet way up in the air. You just need to get your heels off the ground. And the importance of that is so you are dancing on the balls of your feet right here. That's where you need to be dancing, on the bottom end of your foot, that pad that's right there. That's important because the faster the steps are, the smaller and the closer together your feet are going to need to be. Um, as well as if your feet are off the ground, it helps you to have that lightness and that bounce. So that's the way to do a proper turn. Let's do it again together. 
So you will notice that I'm wearing shoes that have a, a lot of rubber sole on them, so that makes it a little bit harder. So you'll often find this is a little bit harder for men who are dancing in their normal, um, you know, rubber soled shoes when they come to loafers when they come to the congregational environment. However, that's why I showed you with these shoes on to show you that it is possible to do those turns. So just be mindful to pivot on both feet and to just get your hips around. Your hips are your friend. So allow your hips, whether you're doing a mayam, you're doing a turn, whatever you're doing, to move into the movement with you so that your whole body is in agreement with the step. Just keep that in mind as you're doing it. So again, that's a three point turn. And oftentimes there will be a pause that is added to the steps because it's usually done in a four count song. So let's do that again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so that's typically how that's going to look. So hopefully you have enjoyed all of these steps that I have showed you today. Hopefully they make sense to you. If you feel like you want me to do any more dance related videos or show you a full length dance, then I will be happy to do so. So right now I'm going to do a combination where I'm going to show you all the steps that we've just done in sequence so you can see how they can work back to back in the same song. And God bless you and I hope that you praise his name in the dance. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and God bless you, and see you next time. Bye-bye.